the final of the Australian Indoor Championship is what draws us once more to the Tweed Heads Club. Welcome to the Gold Coast. I'm Steve Rebilliard for ABC Sport. But quite surprisingly, only one seeded player made it through to the semi-finals. That was also the man who has won this event four times. Let's see who is playing in the final. And indeed, Steve Glasson is that man who's won it three times in a row and also in 1994. He's up against a very experienced bowler in Ray Glasser. Let's show you how they got there. And Steve Glasson has done it relatively comfortably, just taken to four sets in the second round by Grant Munn, and then straight sets wins over both Bill Cornells in the quarters and Ian Taylor in the semis. Ray Glasser did it a bit tougher. Three sets in the first two rounds, Doug Akers and Ian Ewing. Four sets against Jeff Aworth and a real struggle in the semi. It was a war of attrition against Anthony Keepy, but he got there. Well, joining me in commentary, of course, Ian Shubak. And Shuey, I guess the favorite has to be Steve Glasson red hot favourite Steve I'd be very surprised if we see an upset in this final today. Glasser would have about 20 years experience on Steve but he's done it all at the top level. He has Ray Glasser he's perhaps one of the slowest players around Steve Glasson one of the quickest so it'll be very interesting to see what speed this game is played at today. Let's have a look at the conditions of play there will be no shot clock so keep that in mind best of five sets each set the first of seven shots no dead ends the jack will be respotted on the rink if it's sent out of bounds and the players may start to visit the head only after their second bowl. Well, Bowls fans from around the Gold Coast came to the club early to mark out their seat with cushions and rugs and bags. They didn't want to miss this. And uh, plenty here as Ray Glasser sends down the first bowl of the final. Big occasion for Ray. Achieved uh, quite a lot in Victoria and Queensland in the world of bowls. We wish him well. He's got his wife here watching on as she was for his... Uh, Marathon semi-final. Good start too. That'll be a settler for Ray. And Steve Glasson, many feel he just about owns this rink. So at home is he. On the carpet here at Tweed. It'll be fascinating to see what uh, length they play. Both semi-finals predominantly... Uh, up around the 30, 31, 32, maximum length, 33 metres here. Solid start by both players. Very interesting, Steve, to see Ray Glasser playing the forehand. Glasson is playing the opposite side. Steve Glasson playing at with St John's Park in Sydney. Third seed was uh, Australia's number one singles player for quite a time. And look at his record in this championship, 94, 97, 98, 99. Last year it was won by Rex Johnson, a Jack High champion in 97. Now, Ray Glasser. We might call them Ray and Steve to avoid the confusion of their surnames. 55, and Coolangatta is his club, but you see the Victorian Masters singles champion. He was uh, raised in Victoria, moved up here. Why wouldn't you with the fantastic weather? Queensland state singles champion, 94. Champion of champion singles winner in 97. And he has started with some confidence. Bye, last one. Thanks, Rod. Sorry. Needs to as well. Just on nearest to you, thanks. Uh, 14 inches behind the jack, Steve. Thanks. A word from our marker there, Rod Heaton from Western Australia. Well, there he is. <laughs> Steve Glasson. Very relaxed manner on the rink, used to the television games. That in itself, Shuey, a little bit of an advantage. A big advantage. Ray Glasser, Steve, he's just picked up Steve Glasson's bowl. He was about to play with his op opposition's bowl. He's got his own back now. Maybe two down, forehand, with a little bit of weight. What's the penalty for that? <laughs> well, actually, when the bowl comes to rest, if that was Steve's bowl, the uh, 
they just swap the bowls over and Steve would actually be able to play with his own bowl not he wouldn't have to play with Ray's. Oh, just walk down there <laughs> so with Ray's and put it in the right spot. It's a sign of nerves, Ray Glasser picking up <laughs> your opponent's bowl. Really strange to see Ray Glasser playing the forehand and Steve the backhand. Ray Glasser would be aware of Glasson's experience on this rink. Good idea to follow that lead. Oh, what a start from Steve Glasson as he begins the quest for a record fifth Australian indoor title. And he collects two in the first end of the first set. Rod Heaton uh, makes it known. Glasson on the board. Crowd oh, anticipating. Two inches, Steve. Thanks. Well, I guess they wouldn't know what kind of a match, really. When you look at the two contrasting semi finals, Ray, a lot uh, slower player than Steve. Both players have a lot of support on the Gold Coast. Steve Glasson originally played at uh, South Tweed Bowls Club before he went to St John's Park in Sydney. And of course, Ray Glasser, well, he's playing every tournament in South East Queensland these days. Works at the Kulangatta Bowls Club, Ray Glasser. Ray kept a very uh, steady demeanour throughout his uh, semi-final against Anthony Kipi. Went for the best part of four hours that match. Ray Glasser, Steve, he has at least a slight advantage in the fact that he has had one game on this rink. We've said often it's a little bit tricky and Steve Glasser knows it so well, but at least Ray Glasser's semi-final against Anthony Kipi it was his first opportunity to play on this rink. So he'd be hoping to match bowls like that. But as we've often remarked about uh, Steve Glasson when he's bowling towards the clubhouse on that forehand side, very much at ease. Yes, that's probably the easiest of all to play for our viewers when you see the blue background behind the players when they're on this forehand side is a lovely draw. Ray Glasser is playing both sides of the rink. That's not bad if both sides are identical, but this forehand is pretty well much the same as the backhand going the other way. As once you get on the right-hand side of the line as we're looking, it's a little bit wider and slower. Maybe a problem for Ray Glasser. It was just that little indication from Steve Glasson that he thought that was just a, a little bit hot coming out of his hand. It flick of the fingers, he knew just it might have been right. long. Not by much. It's a worrying sign, Steve. He knew straight away and he was only 60 centimetres or a couple of feet <laughs> overweight and he knew. Ray Glasser now switches to the backhand. His first bowl of the match on this side in this direction. Turns a little bit more the backhand. Not a good result. Did you have a look, mate? No, I didn't get in actually, mate. Do you want to have a look? Just if you want. tell me what you reckon, yeah. Steve Glasson asking Rod Heaton to have a look and give his interpretation on second shot, who's certainly Glasson with the shot bowl. Makes Rod Heaton Just in here. His, his opinion's only one. Steve may play a shot. This bowl here is worth a lot. He can play dangerous through there. He may play a little bit of weight trying to get to the bowl on the forehand. He's looking at the backhand through this gap. He's thinking, if, if I could make it, there's four shots on offer. Will I? Maybe safe it. <laughs> he wants to play. Well, this is an indication of how confident Steve Glasson is. He's playing into danger through two opposition bowls. Enough way to hold the line. Take out Glass's nearest bowl for three, maybe four shots. A 
a little bit conservative. Still one. Needed more weight. I think you, you've sometimes uh, suggested in the past, Chewy, that those in-between weighted shots from Steve are perhaps the one area where he has a, a slight weakness. Only on his backhand. <laughs> uh, backhand with that sort of weight, he does play narrow probably 90% of the time. He plays firm weight very good. But just his backhand, that shot is probably his most unreliable shot. Ray Glasser. He'll be probably happy just to... Well, he's playing backhand, trying to play a similar shot. He'll need weight to get underneath his short bowl. Could promote... Oh, he has. That looks like two shots now to Steve Glasson. Might only have been one before. Oh. That, uh, a gift. Three, Josh. Yeah, three. Three. Well, Paul three. Chirkov and Ron Hudson oh, confirm. Oh, that's oh, three oh, shots oh, to Steve Glasson. Oh, held, held up by Rod Heaton, so that's oh, a 5-0 lead. Before. Very quickly for Steve Glasson. Well, Steve Glasson would only have hoped for a scoreline like this after two ends. But such has been his form coming to the final. It's really no big surprise, Shuey. No, Steve. It, uh, very unfortunate in a way for Ray Glasser conceding a bonus shot, really. He just, that was a lack of confidence. It needed a lot more weight than he played, Ray. It will take Ray probably four or five ends. This is his first national final. Steve Glasson's won four Australian indoors. He's won three Australian super singles titles, Moama. So it's really just another day at the office for Steve Glasson. Ray Glasser, it's the biggest game of his career. Long and distinguished career of 33 years. Steve. Glasson has played with size five heavyweight bowls for the entire tournament and got to the semi-final and switched to a smaller set, size four. Believes they perform better on this carpet, on this rink. I think he's made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, smiles of uh, admiration and appreciation from good crowd here. Ray Glasser, a lot of our viewers like to know what bowls the players are playing with. He's also playing with a size four heavyweight. His trusty set. Never changes. Steve Glasson, well, I think he's got about half a dozen sets, depending on the conditions. Ray's wife, Penny, on the left there. She Big uh, fan of her husband's achievements. On the right, too, there was uh, Australian women's coach, Robbie Dobbins. He's just been appointed to coach the Australian women's team for next year's Commonwealth Games. A lot of Cool and Gatter members today here supporting Ray Glasser. Well, Glasser's one down, Steve. This is the type of shot that Ray needs to make for his confidence. He's one down. If he could sit Glasson's bowl out and stay for two, he'd really feel as though he could maybe not win this set, but he's in the match. And again, just delicate weight. Lucky result. Oh. <laughs> this has two seconds. <laughs> if he'd been a touch narrower, he could have given away another shot. But he has got a wobbly old uh, rub off that one. And Second shot. Steve Glasson, um, he's holding one at the moment, Steve. There's a shot on. I think he'll go for it. It's on either hand. He could either play <coughs> off that bowl to bring the jack there. Otherwise, he trails the jack through to here for a count of three, maybe four. He knows that Ray Glasser will be reaching with weight. So Steve is playing backhand underneath his own bowl, <coughs> looking for movement on the jack. Had the weight, missed the line. Straight 
Glasson with a 5 nil lead. Plus one, perhaps. Ray Glasser is probably thinking, how much weight should I play? If I drive that bowl solid, what happens if the jack comes out here? One, two, three. So he's only one down. Delicate weight, probably on his forehand. Fraught with danger if he attacks with a lot of weight. No change. Three ends won by Steve Glasson. An average return of two shots per end. And a 6-0 lead in the first set. Glasson in control of this first set. How long can he keep it? And he needs uh, one more shot for the set. Maximum length, sure. That mat is right back, isn't it? Yes, maximum length. And uh, Steve dropped a metre short, 32.8 metres, almost well, nine inches short of 33 metres. Ray Glasser hardly played a maximum length in his semi final match. Didn't play too many short ones. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't play one short one. <laughs> Either did Steve Glasson against Ian Taylor in the semi final. Quite remarkable, not one short end played in either semi final. Wonderful opening bowl. Ray's bowl, thanks, Rod. How far in front? Thanks. Five inches, Steve? Thanks. Rod Heaton, a marker, five inches away. Glasson. Almost expect to draw it in his mind. <laughs> no fluke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this is Glasson's rink. Ray needs to get on the scoreboard quick, Steve. Easier said than done when you're playing Steve Glasson in red hot form, but if he was to lose this first set without scoring, that's added pressure on any player. Steve Glasson and his semi. Oh, he's not happy with that. <laughs> Bit hot. Effective rate there for Glasson. Well, he was 81% in the semi. He's 86 already, and Ray Glasser only 64%. A result uh, of that ball bearing out Steve Glasson's dissatisfaction as it left his hand. Let's watch again a little snap of the finger. That means he doesn't like it, and generally it's long. Too hot. <laughs> now, Ray Glasser has two seconds, Steve. He must make the conversion shot now. Can afford to reach, trail the jack, turn his short bowl up. Fall in. Yeah, that might have done it. Come down, Steve. Come down. <coughs> Rod Heaton checks. He's fairly confident that Glasser, courtesy of this, has taken shot away from Steve Glasson. Steve will be looking with a little bit of weight, maybe turning the shot ball over or bringing the jack through. Difficult shot. Can only see the edge of the jack. What's he got? What's he got? Oh, he's got a touch of genius. That's what he's got. <laughs> There's the set lie again for Glasson. Oh, that is unbelievable. As I mentioned, it was a very difficult shot. He could hardly see the jack from the mat. Inch perfect weight. One down to two up. Great bowling, Steve. 
glass and all. <laughs> Must have slipped. Must have slipped. Must have slipped. Oh, that's a kick in the guts for this man, Ray Glasser, who thought he was going to be on the board in his first set. Steve Glasson said, I'll just uh, tuck it in here. Difficult shot for Ray to he'll have to switch to the backhand. Set down, must attack. <laughs> to try to say, stay in this first set. Arriving with some weight, what can he do? Oh, it glances off the first two bowls and steers away. No change, and uh, Steve Glasson gets what he needed out of this uh, fourth end of the first set. Watch Ray Glasser come in again. He just made contact with that first and second bowl there, and uh, the shot bowl stayed where it was. That was the one Steve Glasson sought. And with the first set in the bag, Taking up the commentary now with Ian Schubach will be Steve Boylan. We start the second set now. And Glasson. Incredible performance in that opening set. Just looking uh, at this stage, should we? Just a class above. Yes, yeah, Steve, the longer this match goes before Ray Glasser scores, the more difficult it's going to be for him. Well, the, the Australian Indoor Championship, there's a trophy and the medals. <coughs> and Glasson has a slippery grip on that trophy at the moment, I might say. They need a major turnaround in this ne next set from Ray Glasser. Players alternate choice of whether they take the mat on each set. Ray Glasser had control of the length, even though he lost at the previous end, start of the new set. He elected to take the mat. Surprisingly, he's virtually rolled the same length that Glasson likes. It's handled it pretty well, but a very juicy target. Steve Glasson's confidence must be soaring. In front of Jack Fire, Steve. Thanks. He'll be just probably thinking to himself, Steve, how much weight will I play to this? Should I trail it a metre for two? Put the jack in the ditch for two? Maybe just draw close with this one and convert with the next. He's in the area, which probably comes as no surprise to a lot of people. Still one down for sure. Rod Heaton just being asked by Ray Glasser to have a second look. Steve's bowl in relation to the jack, the last one, please, Rod. Four and a half inches behind Jack Eye. Thank you. Good sign. Ray Glasser, second set. First question. Mentioned in the semi final, <laughs> yeah. he's a real chatterbox. He likes to ask a lot of questions, which is very good tactics. It can re just relax and ease the nerves did not ask one question of the marker in the first set. Oh, well, we'll find out if it works. <laughs> He's played with a fair bit of weight, which is certainly not what he wanted to do, I'm sure. Problem with that, Steve, is that Ray Glass has got all the bowls on the right-hand side, as we're looking now. Steve's got them on the left. Whichever player can maybe move the jack could score a big count. Glasson gets hold of this jack. Ray Glasser's nightmare could continue. Well, he's very close to... Oh, what a great shot from Glasson. This man is hard to stop. Fantastic shot, as you mentioned, Ian. Just trail the jack over to the left-hand side. And it's a couple. And it's a good couple. So... He's looking at two down now. He doesn't have a bowl behind the jack, as you mentioned. Steve Glasson's got the bowls behind. It looks to be wide. Well, he's turning. He might get a bit of help off his own bowl here. Well, he got it full, but Glasson will still hold two. Well, 
Well, Steve Glasson's got two. He'd be probably happy with that. But it's two shots on. He could play confidently here, trying to turn that bowl over and bringing the jack through to here. Safer option. If he played the forehand, he doesn't want any movement of the jack over here. So he may try a little bit of weight, just a confident draw. Ray Glasson knows that Steve could make four shots if he's bold enough. Just arriving overdraw weight. Well, he's got two at the moment. And any contact is probably going to be good. Oh, well, I might just draw another one for three. Yep. That's a great ball. You're worrying me then? Yeah. Oh, geez, he's got another one coming. That's what, that's, that's what, uh, well, the players that's thought what, Ray Glasser really thought he had an old, another bowl left, like but I can tell you he's in for a shock. He didn't have one. He's dropped three. And Glasser is away to a fine start in the second set. Yeah. <laughs> Steve Glasser now. 3 0 up. First bowl from Glasson. Pretty good. Uh, Glasser will bowl and down on the rink we're joined by our marker Rod Heaton. And Rod, um, I don't know how to describe this. Uh, Rod, bit of an awesome display. Yeah, he's uh, really found his touch quite early in the game, hasn't he? And I think, do you uh, do you find much difference really in uh, in either side of the green here today? Uh, they've mainly been playing the one side, and I found the Steve's backhand would probably just be drawing a fraction more. And in that last end, uh, Rod, it appeared that Ray Glasser thought he still had one bowl to play. Yeah, he scared me too. <laughs> Glasser's bowl, Glasson's bowl now, just coming in, still touch short though. What do you think, Rod? Uh, what do you think Ray Glasser has to do? Maybe change this game a bit? Change the length? I I think Ray will have to uh, maybe try and move the mat around a bit for him and try and throw Steve's length off. Glasser now. <clears throat> Just nearly there. Not quite. Glasser still holds one. Steve Glasson probably tried to roll the jack maximum length. He's one metre short of maximum. Did ask Rod Heaton, our marker, how far short of the tee was the jack. And as a result, both players just struggling a little bit to find that range one metre shorter than they played two ends ago. Doesn't take Steve Glasson too long to find the range. Not sure, Not sure if she's touched, Steve. Gap distance. Oh, quarter of an inch, Ray. Bit close, isn't it? <laughs> that is close, Ray, yes. Quarter of an inch. Well, this time, Ray Glasser, Steve, he's got two bowls to play. He surely would... His nerves are not are you, that shattered yet. But are he you must, sure about that? He must get second shot. That is tactically the right shot to play. Draw second now. Don't try to convert too early. Save the conversion shot until his last bowl. He does have a bowl behind bottom of screen. That could be the, the shot that gets the bowl that gets him on the scorecard first. Shake of the head. Not happy. Still two down. Interesting though. Glasson's uh, holding a couple, but I suppose the last, uh, the last couple of bowls from Glasser around behind the head might tell a story in terms of what he's going to play next. Well, Steve Glasson won't be greedy. I'm sure of that. I think... Uh